Uh oh guys, Andrew Bynum is hurt. What can the Lakers do? There are three options here in my opinion. Let's go over them. Option one is the Lakers are perfectly fine as they are. Andrew Bynum is out. He probably won't be back until the last week of the regular season. That's okay. Here's what they can do. Move Pal Gasol to center as he played last year and played reasonably well. That's step one. Step two is to start Luke Walton at power forward, which he is capable of being a relatively big person. Step three, you mix in Trevor Ariza and Vladimir Radmanovich at power forward as well as shooting forward. Both of them are relatively big guys. They're more natural as shooting forwards, but they are big enough to play power forward. And then you mix in Odom at center and power forward. Odom's game is not one of a center or a power forward, but he is big enough to play both. He is six foot ten. he has long arms, and if they absolutely need him to be a big man and play like it and get rebounds and have a post game, then that is what they have to do. But they did something similar last year and it got them all the way to the finals. And they, if they need to play small, then that's what they will do. One thing to consider here is the Lakers did make the finals last year. Last year, the West was better than it is this year. Furthermore, when you compare the Lakers now without Andrew Bynum to the Lakers of last season, you will see that they are better now than they were then. The team is largely the same. There are two main differences. Jordan Farmar is much better now than he was then, one, and two, they have a healthy Trevor Ariza opposed to last year when he was hurt brings me to my next point of the lack of competition in the West. Their main competition in the West are the San Antonio Spurs, who are aging and have only four players making a significant impact, everyone else being a role player of semi-competence. Denver has a shaky defense. Portland has no veteran leadership and sometimes depends too much on jump shooters because Greg Oden's offensive game is raw. New Orleans has problems scoring, they have no bench, and Chris Paul was hurt last night, and if that is serious, their season may be over anyway. Houston will probably not stay healthy this season and have playoff issues when healthy. We all know about Tracy McGrady not being able to win playoff series. Dallas lacks a post presence to take advantage of Bynum being hurt anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Dallas is a jump shooting team to begin with. Utah cannot play well on the road, so as long as L.A. has home court advantage in a playoff series, potentially, they will be fine against the Jazz. And finally, you have Phoenix, just a total mess, cannot play defense, have unhappy players, just a lot of things going on in Phoenix. So, the West is easily winnable without Andrew Bynum. Philosophy number two, the Lakers are not fine, but have the trading chips to make a deal anyway. Here are your options. Using the following three players, make a trade package. Lamar Odom, Vladimir Radmanovich, and Derek Fisher. All three of these guys are solid, capable veterans who really won't get better, but we know what we're getting out of them. Lamar Odom is a 6'10 player with point guard handles and can do just about anything from shooting the three to playing in the post if he really needs to, to being just about anything you need him to be because of his versatility. Vladimir Radmanovich is also 6'10", with the ability to shoot 40% from 3. You do not want him in the post, but if you absolutely have to have it, he has the size. And Derek Fisher is a veteran point guard who can run an offense and do a little bit of everything you expect from a point guard. Here is a list of big men currently on the trading block, potentially. Jermaine O'Neal of the Raptors, Marcus Camby of the Clippers, Raif LaFrenz of the Blazers, Brad Miller of the Kings, David Lee of the Knicks, Antoine Jameson of the Wizards, Charlie Villanueva of the Bit Bucks, Carlos Boozer of the Jazz, Elton Brand of the Sixers, Amari Stoudemire of the Suns, Chris Bosch of the Raptors. Now, I would also include Shaquille O'Neal here because I don't think Phoenix would terribly mind getting rid of his gigantic expiring contract. Some of these players are power forwards, some of them are centers, some of them are capable of playing both, but these are all the big men that I think will be available on the trading block for a trade. Which one will LA get if they need to make a trade? I do not know, but those are the options. Now, if the Lakers lose Lamar Odom, 
Luke Walton, Vladimir Radmanovic, and Trevor Ariza will have to experiment with the power forward position, possibly even the center position from time to time. If they lose Derek Fisher, Jordan Farmar will start, and Kobe Bryant and Sasha Vujicic have to take on more point guard related responsibilities. This might entail moving Trevor Ariza to shooting guard on occasion. If they lose Vladimir Radmanovic, they will start either Trevor Ariza or Lamar Odom at shooting forward. If they lose Lamar Odom plus Derek Fisher, you just combine the two issues together of losing Odom and losing Fisher. They really do not interlap. If you lose Lamar Odom and Vladimir Radmanovic, Luke Walton has to play backup shooting forward, Trevor Ariza has to play starting shooting forward, and Josh Powell will have to get more time at power forward. If you lose Fisher and Radman, you just combine the two issues of losing Fisher and losing Radman because they do not intertwine. I do not think they will lose all three. I do not view that as a possibility. That would be a completely unreasonable trade for them to make. My favorite trade possibility, though I know this will not happen, involves the Lakers sending Lamar Odom and Derek Fisher to Phoenix for Shaquille O'Neal. I know this will probably not happen simply because of the history between Shaq and Kobe, but I do believe they have made up, and I believe that if they got together again, they would put aside their differences to try to win a championship. The Lakers make this trade for obvious reasons. They need a center now, they have a history with Shaq, and I'll bet LA fans would love to bring him back to try and win him another ring, you know, with him win another ring. Phoenix will do the trade because they get rid of Shaq's gigantic contract, which expires in two years, they get Lamar Odom's giant contract, which expires in one year, and Fisher's smaller contract, which expires in two years. So, in terms of expiring contracts, for Phoenix, nothing will change. They also get Lamar Odom to play power forward, they can move Stoudemire to center, plus they get a backup point guard for Steve Nash, which they have been looking for for a long time, but have not been able to find. With this new setup, with Amari Stoudemire at center, Lamar Odom at power forward, Grant Hill at shooting forward, Jason Richardson at shooting guard, and Steve Nash at point guard, they might be able to go back to the run and gun offense, which they are better at running than the current half-court offense that they are attempting and failing to use. Option number three. The Lakers are not fine, and they don't have the trading chips. Lamar Odom is an expiring contract with raw talent but makes too many stupid mistakes to have value. Radmanovic is overpaid and has no post game and is only good for shooting threes. Derek Fisher is an aging point guard with poor sl shot selection. Nobody wants these guys. So they will not be able to spin a trade unless they give away a player that they really like like Jordan Farmar or Trevor Ariza. Without Bynum, the Lakers will not be able to get past the Spurs. Duncan is too good. He will abuse Gasol on defense because Gasol has shaky defense. Without Bynum, they'll, n they'll not be able to contain him. And the Spurs will beat them in the playoffs and possibly jump them in the seedings before then if they do not have Bynum. Which one do you believe? I believe in the first option. I believe the Lakers are fine the way they are. But those are the three things that could possibly come out of this Andrew Bynum injury. The Lakers definitely do not like it, but what do you think? Are they fine the way they are? Option one, which I outlined. Do they need to make a trade? Option two, or three, are they just screwed? No matter what you believe, Andrew Bynum should be back for the last week of the regular season and the playoffs. If nothing else, he misses the first round of the postseason, which LA should have no problem in. They will play a messed up team like Phoenix or Dallas or Utah, and he will be back for the second round. Should be ready to go at the very latest by the finals. Should the Lakers be there, and I think they will be. What do you guys think? Let me know.